Hello. Okay. I don't think I need to use it. Do I need to use it? You all can hear me, right? Okay. If I'm speaking too loud, please stop me. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for coming to the math day. We really appreciate it. And uh, I want to introduce our speaker for a few minutes. But typically, when it comes to speaker, we talk about where did the PhD and what achievements they did. But when it comes to Pam, I just want to talk about my association with her. I first met Pam in 2008 for the joint math meetings when I'm looking for a job. And uh, Pam is looking to hire someone. And Pam calls that in her words, speed dating. We all go to each and every employer, talk for 10 to 15 minutes, and then we'll decide. And it, it really clicked, and here I am. So if you have taken my math classes and hating me, you know who is responsible for that. Okay? <laughs> okay, I'm just making sure. And uh, under her leadership, I learned a lot. And whenever I have questions about what to teach, how to teach a particular topic, and she's one of the persons I go to. She really helped me to improve my teaching over a period of time, and she is sort of my icon when it comes to teaching. She has a wonderful family, and uh, I want my husband and two wonderful kids, but still her first love is always you, the students, and teaching. So after retiring, I know she's not missing any of us in all the meetings, but I know she is missing the teaching and the students. Still, she knows all of her students and who is going out with whom and what they are doing. And again, when it comes to Pam, you are all in. You are all in. So she's really missing her teaching. I know that for sure. Pam, really, we all need great math teachers. So if you're really looking for a low-paying, hard-working job, please come to us. Okay? Now, now, when it comes to her, she finished her PhD in BGSU in abstract algebra. And then she worked at BGSU for a couple of years and then went to Siena Heights and she got disgruntled by large classes, sizes. So she started working here from 2006. She found a home in Finley and we are thankful for that. And, and she won a number of awards for her teaching. Uh, she was the University Distinguished Faculty Award in Mathematics from Ohio MAA. And she got our David Allen a Distinguished Teacher Award with the University of Finley. And she's the uh, invited speaker for Ohio MAA. So if you are coming to Ohio MAA, you get an opportunity to hear her once more. So if you are thinking about coming to Ohio MAA meetings, please let me know. Okay. And with that, it's my pleasure to welcome Pam. Please give her a round of applause. <laughs> give me a hug. Here, sweetie. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yeah? Um, well, Chandra says that I know everything about everybody's love life, and that's kind of true because I have no filter. So I'm going to give you that warning right off the bat. If it comes into my head, it pops right out my mouth. <laughs> okay? So um, I am 60 years old. I am the original gamer. Okay, I have been gaming before gaming was even known about. Okay, and so it makes sense, and I don't do anything if it's not fun. Okay, so it makes sense that I would want to uh, apply my mathematics background to gaming. All right, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay. Um, I wanted to come up with something that rhymed. Don't you like the wrath of math? That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. Um, does anybody, nobody older than 30 can answer, know what this is? Pong. That is Pong. It came out, let's see, I was eight years old when I got a Pong for Christmas. And it was the most amazing thing in the world. Okay, and that's what, uh, that's what set me off on my, on my love of gaming. We then got an Atari. Do you guys heard of an Atari? Do you know how we programmed games on it? On cassette tapes. Imagine. Okay. Okay, so that's just a little background. 
Um, we're going to start easy. We're going to start with tic-tac-toe. Okay, easiest game in the world, right? You play it when you're with your parents in a restaurant on the back of the back of the menu, right? Um, that is called an adversarial game because you're pitting yourself against someone else or an uncooperative game, okay? Has anybody ever not played tic-tac-toe? Okay, all right, well, we have an example. I am going to have my wonderful volunteers. What's your name? Luke and Eden. Eden? Okay, come up, and they are going to play a game of tic-tac-toe, okay? Let me get you some pens. X's? Oh, here. Okay, so the goal of the game is to get your, your X's three in a row or your O's three in a row. Go. Okay, all right, thank you. What happened here? Yeah, let's thank our volunteers, Luke and Eden. Um, did anybody win? No, what do we call that? A draw, or for some reason when I was little we called it a cat? cat what? Cat. cat, what's the second word? Cats, why? Anyway, I don't know why we called it a cat, but we did. Okay. That happens a lot in tic-tac-toe. We're going to talk about how to minimize that possibility, okay? We are going to be doing a branch of mathematics called discrete mathematics. I know when you think of math, you think about computation, okay? Not what I love about mathematics. I love logic. I love strategy. Um, computations are kind of tedious, but you have to know how to do them, right? Okay. Um, so this is not really algebra or calculus-based. All logic, it's big in computer science. Um, I believe all computer scientists have to take a discrete math course. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to solve tic-tac-toe by building a game tree. Okay. What is a game tree? Well, here's the start of the game tree. Here is our blank board, okay? X is blue. There are nine possibilities for X to place where, where you can put your X, yes? And then under each, each of these nine, once you have one space filled, there are, whoa, whoa, whoa. You have eight places to put the O's, and so forth. Okay, that's huge, right? Uh, in fact, there are 255,000 possible tic-tac-toe games. All right, that's a little daunting. That's a little daunting. Um, in fact, it's unmanageable. So we are going to do what's called pruning of the tree, by using some logic, okay? What we're gonna do is use the symmetry of the game. What do I mean by symmetry? Um, if I start with uh, this, what can I do with this for it to have the same shape? Okay, I can rotate it, right? That has the same shape. I can reflect it. That's the same shape, yes? Okay, that's what I mean when I talk about symmetry. Oh my God, I lost my clicker, there it is, okay. All right, now I claim that these two are the exact same game. 
How come? X in the upper left-hand corner, X in the lower left-hand corner. What if I take that game board and rotate it 90 degrees? What will it look like? The X turns up in the upper left-hand corner, yes? We use symmetry to come up with the exact same board, okay? Okay, um, so that's one way we're going to make our tree smaller. We're going to use symmetry. Uh, this also happens later in the game, okay? Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah. wait, 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 okay. I'll get the hang of this. Um, so this is my board I'm looking at. I claim that this board is the same as this board. Why? Yes, tell me. Uh, the bottom one, I, I buy the flipping. The bottom one, I buy the flipping. Look, if we, if we mirror this bottom board, this X would go here, this zero would go here, this X would go there, right? So that's a reflection. Those are the same boards. What about this guy? It's a rotation. If I rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise, this X would go here, this O would go here, this X would go there. Yeah? Okay. Okay. So there's a lot of boards that we can combine. Okay. We're also going to eliminate what I call stupid moves. Okay. You're not supposed to call anything stupid, but you're going to see this is stupid. Okay. Um, <laughs> my X starts there. I'll put my O there. X goes down there. And this is where the person playing O has heat stroke or something, and they put their O there. Do we all agree that's a stupid move? Yeah, we're gonna throw those out. We're gonna throw those out. Okay. Um, like I said, this is called pruning the tree. What has that done for us? <sighs> I will get the hang of this. You can teach an old dog new tricks, okay. Um, my first row now, instead of having nine boards, we, tr we prune that down to three boards, yes? Um, this is going to be the same as starting in any of the middle parts. This is going to be the same as starting in any of the corners, okay? When we do this, we can get our tree size down to 63 possible games, 255,000 down to 63. Not bad, not bad. Okay, now I wanna look at the bottom of our game tree, okay? So, this is the board I'm at, yes? X has, it's now X's turn. X can go here, here, or here, yeah? Okay. Then from here, there's two possible places for O to go. In one case, O wins. In one case, X wins. Yes? We take the branches down until the game is over. Either X wins, O wins, or we get a draw. Okay? Um, if you were X, what would you do? If you were X, what would you do? Um, let's see. If I put it here, O can win and X can win. If I put it here, O can win or draw. Definitely don't want to do that one, right? Uh, if I put it here, we can either get a draw or X could win. I think that's our best choice. You agree with that? Yeah. Okay, um, we don't want O to win, right? Because uh, this is an adversarial game. So, how do we win? If I go back up to the top of the tree, look at my three starting spots, follow the tree all the way down to the bottom of the tree. If I start in the center, X wins twice, we get four draws, and zero win, or an O 
doesn't win. If I start in the middle, X wins once, we have eight draws, three O wins. If I start in the upper left, X wins nine times, we get nine draws, O can't win. Where should you start? This guy, right? First of all, you don't want O to win, so that throws this out. So I'm looking at this or this. This says X is winning about 33% of the time, right? This is saying X is winning 50% of the time, if we both play rationally, okay? So that, if you start in that corner, you can't lose. O can't win, okay? Um, not to pick on you, Luke. Did Luke start in the right spot? He started in the middle. No, he did not start in the right spot. Okay, can O, if we start in that upper left-hand side, can O do anything to win? Nope. Okay, but if O can't win, what's the next best thing? A draw, okay? So, um, what would O want to do as the second move? Louder. Uh, let's see, we got two and two, three and one, three and three, O and two, one and one. So I think O should go in the center, yeah? Okay. Okay, so if you go first, you will never lose, ever, okay? Uh, again, note that never losing does not mean always winning because you could end up in a draw. Tic-tac-toe is not what we call a fair game. What is a fair game? You both have 50% chance of winning, okay? Um, so, uh, let's play another game. Where's my next two volunteers? What's your name? Kai, come on up. And what's your name? Aaron, Aaron come on up. Yeah, let me get pens and a board. Now if I ask who wants to go first. <laughs> Are you a math major? No. No? I'm an English major. You're an English. What is your major? Pre-vet. Pre-vet. Pre okay. So I'm going to let you be X because you're science. <laughs> okay. What do we think is going to happen? 50% chance X wins or 50% chance of a draw? Okay. Go. Okay, there's the draw, baby. Yeah? <laughs> Unless we have heat stroke, yes. <laughs> Boom. Draw. Thank you. <laughs> this kind of makes the game not fun anymore, right? It's like, why bother? It's like, why bother? Um, before we go on to our next game, I, I, I looked into um, tic-tac-toe. That's a darn easy game, right? About chess. Whew. How many possible games are there in chess? 10 to the 120th power possible games. That is a one followed by 120 zeros. Huge. Um, this number is called the Shannon number. Um, he did this research back in 1950. Um, we do not have the computing power yet to handle this game tree. Okay? Just to get an idea about how big that number is, after each player has taken five turns, 
there's still over 69 trillion possible games. Okay, that's a big game tree. Chess has not been solved. Tic-tac-toe has. It's not fun anymore, right? Once you solve a game, it's not fun anymore. Okay. Um, all right. So the next game uh, we're going to look at is called NIM. I bet none of you have heard of it, except maybe the math professors. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, this is what a NIM board looks like. You have any number of stacks of whatever, coins, okay? Um, you're going to start first. You're going to remove any number of coins from a single stack. So if you start, oh crap, okay. If you start first, you might pick this and you might pick one, two, three, four, or all five coins from that stack, okay? Then the computer is going to take its turn, all right? The person taking the last coin wins. Easy peasy, right? Yeah? Okay. Oh, crap. I need one more volunteer. I didn't get enough volunteers. Ooh. What's your name? Jarrett? Come on up. You were volunteered. Normally, I'm the pe person that volunteers people, but this is thanks to Alex. <laughs> okay. 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 So, are we ready to go? I'm going to... Whoops. I actually need the slideshow to be running, because if I click... Oop. Go, 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 go. Ah, there. Okay. Click. Oh, crap, it didn't work. Can you click on my computer? There we go. There we go. Okay, so here is our game. Um, it is your turn. What would you like to do? Tell him up there, because he's got control of my computer. Okay, now it's the computer's turn. <laughs> okay, computer turn. Ah, oh, the computer won. Thank you, Jared. <laughs> This is not an easy game to win. It's not an easy game to win if you don't know the math that's going on behind it. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, can we get back to my PowerPoint? There we are. Okay. Okay. So, how can we win? We need to convert numbers to binary. Do you, got, do you all know what binary is? Yeah. Um, we have a base 10 system, right? Gosh, project yourself back to like third grade, okay? Um, at least I remember doing this. Do you, did you guys do this back in third grade? Take the number 321 and write it as 3 times 100 plus 2 times 10 plus 1 times 1. Anybody? Yeah? Okay. Okay. All right. That's what it means to be base 10. Everything is based on powers of 10. 1, 10, 10 squared, 10 cubed. Okay. Binary is base 2. Our only digits for binary are 0 and 1. This is weird. Let's count in binary. 0, 1, uh-oh, I'm out of digits. What do we got to do? 1, 0. We add another placeholder, right? 1, 1. Uh-oh, out of digits. 1, 0, 0. 1, 0, 1. 1, 1, 0. Do you see how we're going? It's weird, I know, okay? 
Okay. All right. So, um, based on powers of 2, 1, 2, 2 squared is 4, 2 cubed is 8, what does 7 base 10 convert into binary? Well, how many 8s go into 7? None. How many 4s go into 7? 1, right? I'm going to subtract 4 from 7 to get 3. Now, how many 2s are in 3? 1. Uh, so I'm going to subtract 2. I'm down to 1. How many 1s are in 1? One? 1. So we can write 7 as 1 times 4 plus 1 times 2 plus 1 times 1. That is 1, 1, 1 base 2. Okay. Okay. Let's practice. There's an easy way to visualize it if you think about it in chart form. We are not going to be converting huge numbers, okay? Um, for example, 5. Let's convert it. How many 8s are in 5? 0. How many 4s are in 5? 1. Subtract 4. Er. How many 2s are in 1? None. How many 1s are in 1? One? 1. Is that me? I'll try not to move around so much. Okay, sorry. <laughs> all right, put all that together. What do we get? One, zero, one. Make sense? Okay, I got two nods. This is like when I just introduced something in calculus. I get that stare. <laughs> okay, three, no eights, no fours. One, two, and one, one, right? So that is 1, 1. 8. Only 1, 8, right? So 8 converts into 1, 0, 0, 0. I told my kids on their 8th birthday that they were turning 1,000. My poor kids. When my son was 3, he decided he was going to count to infinity. I think he got to like 12. <laughs> But it was cute. Okay. <laughs> 11. How many 8s go into 11? 1. Subtract 8 from 11, you get 3. There are no 4s. There's 1, 2, and 1, 1. If we can't do this, we're screwed. We're always going to lose NIM. Okay. Okay. So our first step to winning is to convert the number in the piles to binary. Okay. So, first pile has 4. I'm going to convert that to 1, 0, 0. Remember, that's 4, 2, 1. Right? Okay. 1, ooh, that's an easy one. That converts to 1. 5, that's 1, 4, and 1, 1, right? So, 1, 0, 1. 4, we already said, was 1, was, uh, one zero zero. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is called a NIM sum, okay? It's not new. It's been around since the 60s, okay? Uh, but it's not the normal addition, okay? If there's an even number of ones in a column, we're going to put a zero at the bottom. If there's an odd number of ones in the column, we're going to put a one in the co uh, column. Uh, computer scientists out there w might recognize this as an exclusive or. Okay. Let's try it. Okay. So, I've got two ones. So, I should get a zero here. Yeah. I got no ones. Zero is even. So, I'm going to have a zero here. And I've got an odd number of ones here, so I should have a one here. So the NIM sum is one, zero, zero. Okay. As long as we do not get all zeros, we'll win. Okay. We're solving this game. We're solving this game. Okay. Well, we didn't get a zero, so we're going to win. All right. What move should we make? Um, well, what we want to do is send our opponent a NIM sum of zero. That means they lose. 
okay? Now, there are three different moves that we can make to get a NIM sum of zero. Um, let's see. Even, even, oh, I got to work on this column, right? The first thing I'm going to do, one of the moves, it would be to get rid of this one, right? That would give me an even number of ones in this column, but I do not want to get rid of this one. So I want to take 101 and change it to 001. Okay? What does that mean? The third column we want to change from a 5 to a 1. That is a winning move. Okay? What else? I started with the hardest move first. Um, what else can we do? Okay. I, okay, I went down here first, but yeah. To get rid of that one, we could just remove that whole dang column, right? That would give me a NIM sum of zero. So we could completely remove column four, or we could completely remove column one. That is a winning move. Okay. Okay. This is called the zero sum game. This is where the term zero sum came from. Uh, zero sum is losing. Okay. Okay. What if you start with a NIM sum of zero? Yow. Well, you're screwed unless the person you're playing against doesn't know this trick. Or you very politely say, you know what, you go first. Um, <laughs> you have that honor of going first, like in tic-tac-toe. Whoever goes first always wins. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I also... We're going to try this out, and we're going to try it with a newbie. Maybe I should pick on the math majors. Does any non-math major want to give this a shot? Oh, I'm sure everybody's going to be. Adam, what do you think? Oh, come on up here. <laughs> okay. So... We are going to start a new game. Can you start a new game? And I'm going to make it a little bit harder, five and five. New game. Go. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Big, so everybody can see. I know you're not good on writing big. Okay, now let everybody see what you got. You see what he did there? Converted everything to binary, okay. What's your NIM sum? Let's write down your NIM sum. If it's even, there's a zero. If it's odd, there's a one. Definitely not zero, so this is a winning position. Okay. Oh, now he's got to figure out what move to make. <laughs> Let's see. We want to get rid of this one, right? And I need, well, I can't do two different columns. I need to get rid of this one. Um, I don't want a one there. Uh, I do want a one there. Do you see that? Here, I'm helping. I'm helping. Right, so I want to go from four to one. Yes, you tell him that.
Okay, computer turn. If you're going to do this in the, I was going to say bars, but I shouldn't say this, in your dorms, <laughs> um, you got to learn how to do it in your head. <laughs> okay. Oh, look at all those nice ones. Odd is one, even zero. Okay. So he has a one, one. What can we change? No, it's one by one. So tell him. We won. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, what time is it? What time is it? What? Oh, I'm fine. Okay. Okay. Um, we won. All right. Very competitive. Very competitive. I like to win. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Okay, for those mathy people in the audience, why is the NIM game important? It's the first game that we study in game theory, other than tic-tac-toe, because of this theorem um, that was done in 1964. Um, any position of an impartial game is equivalent to a NIM pile of a certain size. So every impartial game, all you need to know is how to win at NIM. And you can win any impartial game. What is an impartial game? Uh, it's a game where any player can move any piece. Okay. Is chess an impartial game? Nope. Okay. Uh, is tic-tac-toe an impartial game? Nope. Uh, what, what is an impartial game? Frankly, once you know everything boils down to NIM, I just kind of forget all the other games. Uh, so, um, and how was this proven? Everybody's favorite proof method, right? Lovely students, proof by induction. Okay. Now, Beware NIM games online. There's a bunch of them, okay? My favorite is Pearls Before Swine. It has really cool graphics. It's got this guy out there you just love to beat because when he wins, he goes, neener, 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 you know, it really ticks you off, okay? They actually switched the rules up on most of the online NIM games. Classic NIM, the person wins who takes the last coin. Um, in Pearls Before Swine, the person loses that takes the last coin. But you basically play the same way until you get, get it down to where you can just logic it out. Okay. So um, I wanted to put that warning out there. Okay. Now, I wanted to give you some suggestions for games to play. Any board game geeks? I, I love board games. Love them, love them, love them. Uh, my son and I have a collection. He's 26. We probably have 70 of them. Some of them are fun. Some of them, one of them took us like 19 hours to finish. That's a little much for me, okay? Um, but this is the best logic board game I have ever played. Aaron Blodgett, you got to try this. The Search for Planet X, it has an app with it. Um, it really stretches those logic muscles, okay? Um, video games, some of my favorite video games that require some logic. Uh, Diablo is my favorite of all time. Bioshock scared the heck out of me, but there's logic. Um, Professor Layton, anybody played Professor Layton? I think that's an old people. Oh, good, 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 good. Um, Portal, has anybody ever played Portal? Oh my God, that hurts your brain, doesn't it? 
When you shoot through here and it comes out from the ceiling, I mean, you really have to use your logic skills. Um, puzzles. I am going to promote on your phone, there is a puzzle page app. It's got amazing puzzles on it. This is one of my favorites. It's called Kokoro. It's basically a crossword with numbers. Okay. Um, this next one. I've gotten pretty good at this one. This one's kicking my butt. Okay. This is called Futoshiki. Has anybody ever tried it? This is all you get. That's all you get. So the numbers one through five have to go into, uh, each number can only occur once in each row and column, okay? Those little signs are greater than and less than, okay? And that's it. This one is really ticking me off right now, but I'll get it. I'll master it. I'll master it. What am I doing in retirement? You're looking at it. Okay. <laughs> Okay, games are a waste of time. I don't think so. Some of them are. Some of the phone games are so silly. So silly. That doesn't mean I don't play them. But they're, they're, they're more relaxed things to help you relax than anything to help you with your problem solving skills. Some games are great though. They really help with your logical thinking. So I don't think games are a waste of time. I can't because I have spent so much time playing them. I cannot think that they are a waste of time. Okay. Um, thanks for coming. I hope you got something out of the talk other than extra credits. Um, do you have any questions? Oh, it was some military game. I tried to put it out of my memory. Milit um, Twilight Struggle was the name of it. Have you heard of it? No. Are you coming this afternoon? Okay. My favorite board game I'm talking about this afternoon. Okay. Okay. Um, if there are no questions, thank you very much for coming. Um, Hope to see you this afternoon. <laughs>